Okay, so, so the talk is about software estimation and it is, it is so hard that some people say it's the black art of software. And yeah, it's ba based on a book, uh, The Black Art uh, of yeah, Software Estimation, I think. Something like this. It will be on, on the, last slide, the last slide. So let's start with a question. How many people uh, are here? Three. Excuse me? Three. I'll revise with the NHS later, but three. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next. Four. OK, and then if you answer this, please tell me what, what is your, uh, how, how did you come to this number? Okay. No. Count the number of legs, divide by two. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's counting and then computing. Okay, uh, next. Excuse me? Okay, so it's uh, first it's judging how many people are sitting in a row and then counting, yes? Okay, next. So it's, okay, it's, it's judgment, so you just guess how many people are here. Next one. Okay, so basically we have three approaches to, well, estimation. First is counting. So we could just, well, count you like, I don't know, like in, in the army they do, yeah. <laughs> okay, then, then we would get the most precise answer. Then there is this computing thing, where you estimate how many people uh, well, sit in a row, then you count the number of rows, or you estimate, for example, you know how many people can uh, be in this, in this room, for example, how many seats you have here, and then uh, you estimate uh, how, how filled up is this, this room. So it's, it's kind of, uh, well, part estimate, part, part judgment, part computing, and, yeah. and then the last one is, is judgment, where you just guess, because you have some experience of estimated crowds or something like this. But the point is that counting, yeah, estimate, okay. So th these are the three approaches to estimation. And then, uh, okay, I think it will be next slide. So let, let's leave this uh, as it is for now. And then what is estimation? So first of all, you need to know what you need this estimation for. And basically, if you are a programmer, you need this estimation so that the project manager can control the, the, the project so that it will reach it, it, its target. Yeah? So uh, the project manager, he can control the project. That, that means he can uh, remove some stuff from it. He can add, if you have too much time, he can add some new features to, to be done. That's, that's, that, he can add people to the project and remove people from the project. So there is, there is a range of, of, uh, of things that, that the project manager can do to, uh, to control when the project will be uh, finished. Yes, so he, can, he, can, he has, has a, a, a bit of uh, uh, of freedom to man maneuver, yeah. but for him to, to do this job, he needs to know what is the current estimation, where, where it would go if he didn't do any changes, yes. So this is what you need, the estimation. And if you make the estimation, it is good to make a range from the worst case to the best case, yeah, so, so that the project manager has more information, not just one number, which is the most probable out outcome, but a range. Then, of course, an estimation is probability as 
associated. It is never 100% uh, sure that it would finish in this, at this time. And, and you need to, you, you, and, and it's always uh, kind of fuzzy and uh, it, sometimes it's not really useful to make a very exact estimation because, uh, because it would take too much time to estimate it and then it's, it's just needed for some pre preliminary plans. So you, you need to uh, make this trade-off between usefulness and, and accuracy. Okay, so how, how would you start estimating a project? Previous experience. So, okay, you have some previous experience with what? Similar project. With similar project. Okay. So you have a similar project. You compare it to your current project, and then you say, okay, this is about twice as much as this previous project, and it's, so we count twice as much. So this is, uh, well, this is estimating. Uh, well, the, the, the comparison between the, the current project and the previous one is judgment, yes? And then the previous one, you have exact numbers, so this is more like counting, okay? Then what is, what else? Sales has already told you when you're delivering by. Excuse me? Sales has already told you when you're delivering by. Okay, yes, yeah, so <laughs> that's not estimation, okay? That's, that's desperation. <laughs> that, uh, well, it, it, it doesn't meet the definition, okay, but so, sorry, I know that it's a joke, but we need to, well, but sometimes you really need to know how to answer this. So, so the point is that estimation is about, uh, uh, it's, it's an ob objective number. It's how long it, will t it would take if you wouldn't, well, remove anything or change the environment of the project. So it's an objective number. If the sales guy gives you a number, then you know, it has no relation really to, <laughs> to the estimation. <laughs> but it can be your target, well, if it is reasonable. Yeah? So if it is a target, then probably the project manager will need to remove something, <laughs> usually, <laughs> to, to, to make the estimation meet the target. Okay, so, but we're, we were talking about starting estimating projects. So we have comparison with past project. Okay, what else? You could, if you know all the tasks in your project and you know from previous experience how long each task takes, then you could just add up the times of your... Okay, so, so you divide the, the, the project into tasks and you estimate each task separately. And uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that, that's it? Or you wanted to make a more? I will go one step further, actually. I break it down into um, parts that I already know how long they will take, and parts that I don't know, I'll probably do double the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, so, so you, you want to have some kind of, uh, well, first, first of all, how do you know that this part will take so much time? Well, you just break it down until you get to the smallest part that you already have experience with. Okay. You take a look at the parts around that you don't have experience with, and then... Okay. You can also break, you, it, back, yes. you can also break it down by controllable factors and uncontrollable factors. Yeah. Yes. So you have, we know we can do our job, but you might be dependent on somebody else doing their job, too. So. Okay. Yeah, it depends how how well the spec this the uh, the specification is done. Yes, so yeah, of course. No, it's just what you get in practice. <laughs>
at least you can control the, the variation in, in the scope. Yes, so, but, but this controlling the variation, it's, it's the project management f thing. Um, uh, the project management work is the yeah, controlling the... You can just an estimate each one. Uh, yes. You know, the owner can validate or invalidate some of the tasks you imagine. From yeah, the yeah, yes, but sure. The practice you have to um, cooperate with moving targets. Well, yeah, but the spec needs to be given to the <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I said at, at, the, at the beginning, yes, you, you need to, well, you need to make the straight off between the accuracy of the estimation, but, well, it's uh, the last slide, but uh, my advice is that you don't give off-cuff estimations, like the manager, the manager comes to you, ask, you, asks you, and he wants the answer immediately. So don't do this. Just take, I don't know, five minutes just to think it calmly, you know, without the pressure and you know, do some calculations and stuff like this. Okay, so let's see what we have in the next slide. So why, why splitting works? Because uh, the most, uh, well, the, the most uh, supported uh, way of, of doing estimation here was splitting it in, into tasks, yes? We'll talk about uh, a bit later what else can we split it into, but, okay, let's assume that it's split in tasks. So why does it work? Yes, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's the, intu the, the intuition we usually have. But actually, if you count it, then usually we make the same error in the small tasks as we do in the bigger. I mean, if, if we don't, uh, if, if this bigger task is like, I don't know, uh, 10 times or if, if it has like 40 or 10 subtasks, then the error the error is comparable. It's, there is no much difference. I mean, if you have a really big task, then it has, well, a different, um, it's, it's kind of different thing than the smaller tasks. But usually if we have something that we can, uh, like, get into our head the whole thing, then there is no much difference. So the intuition is, is it kind of works for very, very big tasks, but very, very big projects, but for smaller one that, uh, well, I don't know what you really do, but <laughs> what I do, or mm, I think what is the most common, then we don't do very, very big tasks, like, uh, because we are programmers, not, not project management. Yes or no? Okay. Okay, so, so that's the law of big numbers. So the individual, you count on the fact that the individual estimates will, uh, the individual errors in estimations will cancel each other. So, uh, okay, when, when does it work? It works when the individual estimates don't have the error in the same, all in the same direction, like it is very, common thing. <laughs> so if your estimates are uh, systematically biased, like it's always under estimation, then it will not work <laughs> because the errors will, uh, will add up and you will end up with actually worse than estimating the, the whole project at once. Uh, so the answer to this is, uh, well, it's, uh, it's kind of a mind trick. 
that you, that you make a range, the worst case and best case scenario. Then you will know, uh, well, if you add all the best cases and all the worst cases, that you will also get a very big range. So it's not the goal to get this very big range, but rather uh, taking into account the worst cases, it usually reminds you what can happen and stuff like, stuff like this. So then you can choose like pointing in the middle or there are many other ways to, to choose it. Like some people take a weighted, uh, uh, a, uh, a weighted average. Uh, they take two times the, the worst case because usually, uh, yeah, people <coughs> underestimate. One times the, the best case, and then they add also, I think, the most probable case. Yeah, so, and they, they take this and, and have a number that is some kind of average of, those, of these numbers, and they take this as, as the estimate. And, So, so the point here is to have this, this, this one, one number that is not really skewed in one direction. It's not systematically biased. You can also try to compute variance and stuff like this and use all the statistics method, but we'll not get into the details here. But the point is that you make a range. Just start with the range and then you will, you will have, you will work on your own uh, method. And uh, so from uh, the, uh, the statistics is that when people do this and then they compare it to the, uh, to, for, well, the, the, the experiment was like this. The researcher were asking people to give just one number first and then give the, the range from the worst case to the best case. And usually the one number that was at the beginning, it was very close to the best case. So, so it's kind of a mind trick to use this range. Okay, and then we can go one slide up. So splitting into, uh, into parts, it also reminds you about necessary steps. It's easy to, to forget about something when you, when you estimate the whole thing at once. Okay, so what we can count, because we split it into, into parts and then we count the parts, that's the usual way to, uh, w w the usual way that we do the estimations so you said that you split it in, into tasks that that's the most common case to do this but you can also have things like story points which is some um, uh, very strict methodology how to how to count this then you can also estimate the numbers of of screens database tables uh, features, well, features like, uh, are like tasks, so that's, we have, we already have this. You can also count the defects of the, that you had in previous projects and somehow project this into in the future. Basically, you can count everything that is correlated with effort. And uh, so, so, for example, if you have a past project that had like 40 database tables and you have a future, your, your current project has like, I don't know, 50 tables and it's, it's of the similar, uh, if it's similar, it's of the same kind as, as the previous project, then you can, uh, well, just uh, uh, multiply the, the, the effort that was, uh, uh, needed for the for the previous project by the appropriate uh, number and get the estimation for the for the next project. Yes. So, and then we we get this 
the cone of uncertainty, which tells us how well we can estimate a project. So at the beginning, we cannot really uh, estimate very, it very well because we don't have things to count. So it's, it's only after we split the project that we can estimate it. And depending on how big this project is and how new or how complicated, it takes time until we, uh, we have uh, the data for estimation. So at the beginning, we, we cannot really give very, very good estimations. Only after, for example, some work is done and uh, the project is split, we know the screens, for example, the database tables uh, and stuff like this. Is this ever symmetrical? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of, of uh, not very, it's very fuzzy law, yes. So, yeah, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot tell if it is really symmetrical. Yes, well, well, the point is that it doesn't tell you uh, really what to do. It, it tells you that you cannot give uh, a better estimation than, you know, in this range at the beginning. So, how to say it in other words? Uh, for, because you can make your, you can have other errors in your estimation, you know, like, you know, not counting the right things and stuff like this. So, you know, it just says that your error is not lower than this. Yes, sure. It is, there's also the giant risk things that you can't take into account there. Your lead program gets hit by a bus or finds a better <laughs> job and quits. Yes, sure. The human factor, yeah. <laughs> well, Art, you know you have X number of new junior programmers. You know they're going to be slower at tasks, but you don't know how much slower. Well, but, uh, yeah, okay. Or you can't use, you say, oh, it has to take so much time Yes. You can't use that for if you know you have two years doing it, for instance. Well, yeah, you should adjust this, yeah. Okay, but that's... In your initial estimation, and count each of these risk factors and multiply your initial estimation. <laughs> okay. Actually, if you take that and, and graph it against a bonus given for arriving on time, <laughs> suddenly that graph goes very flat and... Okay, so it's kind of related to the next slide. So, uh, if you if you compare, uh, well, what, what do you count? Uh, so, for example, you count the tables. Yes. So you can only estimate the effort from this if you know the effort for writing uh, one table. Yes. So, and this effort you can take from your past uh, projects, and uh, and or you can take it from industry data, but yeah, the industry data has a factor like 10, I think, and you need to uh, uh, you need to use the very strict methodology like function points and stuff like this to use the industry data. So so industry data is not very useful. You need to, to have your own uh, data from the same team or perfectly from the same project, yes. And yeah, from this, if you, if you do iterations in the project, yeah. Not just in the project that succeeded because the project failed as well and that had lots of effort. Yeah, sure. You're yeah. That's also valid data where it didn't work. Excuse me? That's also valid data. All the if it, attempts, I mean, that's also uh, information you have. So when, when stuff went wrong, you can look at your next project and see how, how likely it is 
Yes, so you, you should take it into account. Yes. Uh, are, you, are we assuming the person who reads the estimate is reasonable? Is that what you're saying? Well, it depends on, on your politics, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's you who do this estimation, yes? So. Yeah, because if you want to do the same thing, you can leverage the stuff that is very, very, very hard to do, but you've already done it so many times before, uh, versus the stuff that requires a lot of research and you have no idea what's going to happen. So you can overestimate the stuff that is hard to do, but not exactly what to do, to make up for the research time. Which is un well, yeah, it's hard to say. I'm, yeah, <laughs> maybe it can work. I, I don't know. Okay, but but the point is that you co that you use the data from from your own organization. Well, the the industrial data is not very useful because it has the factor of ten between mm, teams. Okay, and then we have this quiz. Uh, yeah, I think you can read it. So, uh, everyone has a pen? Yeah. Who doesn't have a pen? Okay, I will just quickly take some more from the, uh, from the stands and you can do your... Are we not Google? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so let, let me explain it first. So, the point is that you should make this estimation so that you have 90% chance that you, are in the, that you are in the range. Well, that the answer is in your range. So you make a range, worst case, best case, and your goal is to be 90% sure that, that you are right. This yes. impractical. It really depends on your overall knowledge of stuff. No, not really. Because uh, you can take very big uh, range if your knowledge is not very good. Like, you know, you can take minus infinity plus infinity, but that would be cheating, yeah? So <laughs> take, take just, I don't know, zero million for something to be 90% sure that you will be right. If, if you know that your knowledge is not very good in a particular area, then take wider uh, range, yes? The, the point is to adjust your estimation according to your knowledge. Okay? Okay, I will just uh, fetch some pens. How many pens do you... Who, who wanted a pen? Okay. Okay. Okay, who cool. can okay. Thank you. Who wanted a pen? Okay, can you pass it? Just throw it. Oh no. Okay. Who else? Okay, great. Okay, everyone ready?
we, we don't have much time. So one, uh, maybe half a minute for this, okay? To finish it. Okay, just quick, uh, quick estimations, okay? <laughs> Please finish it. Okay, I th okay, we don't have time really to, for, sorry? Okay, so here are the answers and you can check if you are in the right spot. I don't know, well, just... Well, that's what it is. Yeah, that's relative. Well, you see, you're going for the fixed number. I'm going for <laughs> Yeah, okay, no, the yeah, project manager. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay, everyone check this answer. Who had more than three good answers? <laughs> okay, so how many people? Just like, like a few people, yes? So most people didn't have more than three. I got two, but I do one of them. All of mine were the city runs, of course. Well, the, the usual, uh, well, the statistics for this is that people usually get two right numbers for this. I got two. While the, the goal was that they would have nine numbers, yes? Because, uh, well, if you are 90% sure, then you should, have right nine answers out of ten, yes? So it, yeah, it shows <laughs> that people are not very good at estimation. <laughs> yeah. It also depends on, like, I got the, the wrong numbers, right? I went for a subjective one for how big is Asia. So I said it's really big and very, very, really big. <laughs> so okay. Well, but you know, you, you, you are asked to adjust your estimation. Yes, well, you know, if you, 
if you have not had, if you have no knowledge about this, you should you should take very wide estimation. Yeah? It's it's like it's like estimating your project. It's very similar because you you don't you usually don't know exactly what you will, will be doing. So you need to you need to adjust your estimation according to your knowledge, according to your uh, well to your familiarity with the subject. Okay, so we don't have much time for the next slides, but we are actually covered. Okay. So we, but we we have cov already covered the most important points. So uh, there are some more. So like when you when you do the estimations, you really really need to standardize. So like you know, if you count the tables, then they should be similar and stuff like this. If you count features and then they should be similar. Then politics. This is actually very important, but I don't have much time. So you need to know the, es the difference between estimation, commitment, and, and target. So the estimation is the objective uh, well, number, how long it will take if you wouldn't make any uh, changes to, to the project. The target is what the business wants, and the, your commitment is what you commit to, the, to the, your manager that you, that you will do. So your commitment will usually be the target, but sometimes not. Yeah. Okay. Then this is not important. Uh, so yeah, it's not at the beginning. You cannot ver give very good answers, so maybe it's not worth estimating. And then there is this thing ab uh, about overestimation and underestimation. So what is the what is bad with overestimation? So we have the Parkinson law that people will work, uh, will use the whole time that is assigned to the project because they will, yeah. Then you have the student syndrome that people just uh, 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 don't do the work at the beginning. They just uh, postpone it indefinitely and then they do it just before the, the uh, the deadline. So th these are the bad things about overestimation. If you if you take too much time for your project, but wh what are the bad things about underestimation? It's basically the worst is that it introduces chaos to your project, and it uh, that's the the worst thing. And I think it it's much better to have overestimation than underestimation. So, um, yeah, and then usually, actually, you have more additional work to do if you underestimate because you need to go to the meetings to, to explain why it is late and stuff like this. <laughs> or the one. Leads to spending too little time on requirements and design, and that makes the future work even worse. And here is the the uh, well, the chart. So, underestimation. The cost of underestimation. It is this uh, well, I don't know, exponential or something. The curve is much worse than linear, and the cost of overestimation is mostly linear. So it's better to overestimate. Yeah. So. Well, yes. Well, yes, because uh, if you take into account the Parkinson law uh, and the student syndrome law, it 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 results in mostly linear things. Sorry, is that that's a I say so because I say so. Do you have yeah, do you have research? Well, that, yeah. Yeah. Cool. well, it is assuming that uh, that what what happens is. Uh, just these two, two things, yeah. Okay, so then the, there are the gold, gold, uh, golden rules. So, yeah, check the definition. Don't give off cuff as estimates because if, if the, the boss, uh, uh, if the boss uh, hears this, then he makes a commitment to the business and then you cannot change it. 
be careful and yeah, re-estimate practice. Then here is this book that I have based this on, and that's all. Sorry, no questions. <laughs>